loves, good morning, or welcome back. As you can see, I've got my raincoat on this morning because it's absolutely miserable outside, which is classic because we're going pumpkin picking today. Just absolutely classic timing. Um, I booked this ages ago. We're gonna go swimming first. And yeah, I just wanted to say hey. tried and tried and tried and tried to film this clip so I'm coming to you from the future I obviously had an original clip here which I've filmed a number of times essentially I was here to catch you up I hope you managed to keep up um, on Friday we went pumpkin picking and then we went to my mum's house for dinner and then on Saturday morning Innes and I went and got a flu vaccine and I did some more books I decided in the end um, having refilmed this clip so many times that I'm better in writing, which I know is ironic considering what I do for a living and what I do here on this channel. So yeah, I'm going to be really, really brief here. If you want to read more, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. I'm sure lots of you are very well informed and hardly need my opinion on the matter. Um, but the reason I haven't really been talking too much in this vlog is that I have been glued to the news, essentially. I have been deeply affected by what I've been seeing in Israel and Gaza. And every day the situation just seems to get worse and worse. I've been devastated by the catastrophic loss of civilian life in Israel and in Gaza. And I have been horrified by the fact that my 
government has proclaimed its wholesale support for Israel's war crimes in Gaza. I will be holding comments for review on this video. I may not post any comments at all. I want this to be a safe space for all communities. I will be reviewing comments and perhaps approving some based on what I think is appropriate. This may even include, you know, kind and supportive comments. You really don't need to thank me for anything. I only say that because that is the kind of DM I've been receiving in a lot of cases and really you don't need to thank me in the comments for saying anything. Um, it kind of seems like the humane thing to do at this point. It's really the bare minimum. I'm not really interested in starting debates in the comments at all. Um, at this point I don't think the situation is really up for debate, um, personally. I really do urge you guys to write to your representatives if your government is in support of Israel and what they are doing to the Palestinian people at this time and to ask them to demand a ceasefire. That is like of the utmost importance and it would be amazing if you could find the time to do that if you haven't already. I'm going to try and continue to vlog as normally as possible um, from now on because I know that these videos are a comfort to many. Um, there are going to be fewer videos this week in general. I'm not going to lie, I'm finding it really hard because I just cannot stop thinking about it. It's all I'm thinking about and I'm finding it hard to think of other things to talk about with you. Um, but as I say, I know these videos are a comfort and um, I hope to continue that. I realise this is very crass, putting this clip of all clips in the middle of going to the pumpkin patch of all things and going to brunch. This is the nature of the weirdness of the internet and social media and these situations, but I couldn't not say anything because I say it's all I'm thinking about. But most importantly, of course, it's incumbent on me to say something because of the dire nature of what we've been seeing. Anyway, my loves, I'm gonna let you get into the rest of the vlog now. Um, I hope that you are all staying safe. So we have had this brunch booked for um, a week or so, and that's where we're headed now. <laughs> really lovely. The staff in there were super nice and um, we had a very nice bit of food so thank you Esther, for inviting us. Ines thoroughly enjoyed the hash browns and I don't know how many she ate but I want to say five or six. 
popped into the Oxfam secondhand bookshop next uh, over the road and picked up a couple of these. I'm always on the lookout for things like this um, in shops, like secondhand bookshops, because you never know what you might find. So I bought a couple of these little, like you know, pocket paperback um, collections of stories by. I think these are specifically sci-fi ones. And this one has got stories by Jean Wolfe in it. I feel like Damon Knight I have heard of. Um, but anyway, it's a good way to discover like new authors, basically, new writers. Um, Joanna Russ, I definitely recognise her name. And I also just love these kind of old, old covers. I'm just gonna look so cute, I'm gonna take this sticker off. And then I got New Worlds 5. This was a quarterly thing released um, edited by Michael Moorcock. That was very wholesome. And now we're headed home. We've got the house is a mess, to be honest. So we want to sort some bits out. I'll continue with the bookshelves. I'll probably chat you through what I've done so far on the bookshelves later today. <laughs> Shell's looking amazing. I'm going to show you where we're at in a minute. Or maybe I should do that tomorrow in the daylight. Uh, no, I'll, I mean, I'll show you a brief overview tonight and then maybe I'll go into some more detail in tomorrow's vlog. Um, but I have some books to show you. I mean, they've, these books have been sort of piling up next to the door and I think it's about time I open them and enjoy them. So some of it is PR stuff. I might not even show you all of the PR books I've got through because I do get sent a lot of stuff that's not really my thing and my style. I actually need to write to the publishers and say, please stop sending me this because I won't read it and it's a waste. I may not show you absolutely everything. I've got a big pile here, but I may not show you everything. So I opened all the boxes with the proofs in them. I've got to say, I don't think I'll be sharing with any of them with you right now. I don't want to waste your time, okay? The wonderful, glorious, and very generous Gina, who is a member of our Patreon community and always cracks us up in the Discord, um, sent me a Poils gift card the other day. I did this big In Ascension send out, and as a thank you, she sent me this gift card. Gina, thank you so much. You were too generous. And this is what I, I picked up um, with said gift card. So thank you to Gina for these. I appreciate you very much. So let's get into it. Uh, I got An Immense World by Ed Yong. How Animal Senses Reveal the Hidden Realms Around Us. I am so excited about this. This is our reference section pick for November and December. So um, our non-fiction mini book club, essentially. And I'll just read you the blurb. I think this one's gonna be right up my street. The earth teems with sights and textures, sounds and vibrations, smells and tastes, electric and magnetic fields. But every animal is enclosed within its own unique sensory bubble, perceiving only a tiny sliver of this world. An immense world coaxes us beyond the confines of our own senses, welcoming us into previously unfathomable dimensions, the world as it is truly perceived by other animals. In doing so, it shows us that to understand our world, we don't need to travel to other places. We need to see it through other eyes. Um, the next book I have, which has the most incredible cover, I don't know if you can really see it, but it's Cacti. It is Juan Rolfo's book, Pedro Paramo. Um, and it's very, very small and short. And it is much lauded, this book, shall we say. 
I'm pretty sure I found out about it via an interview with Hernan Diaz and he said something like he wrote a lot of great books but, and very few have been published into English I think I think yeah it's called legendary Mexican classic on the back here I think it's very famous in Latin America Juan Preciado swears to his dying mother that he will find his father Pedro Paramo from whom they fled many years ago and so he sets out from for Comala, a town alive with whispers and shadows that seems populated only by memory and hallucinations. So yes, I am very much looking forward to this one. Maybe I will squeeze it onto my 2024 TBR thing as it's so short. I also got another Martin McInnes book because I am very intrigued. This one is called Infinite Ground. <sighs> I want to say it's his like second most famous, even though books have not been that famous um, before now. Yeah, it looks like this was his debut novel. Carlos has disappeared. A retired inspector takes the case, but what should be a routine investigation becomes something strange, even sinister. As the inspector relives and retraces the missing man's footsteps, the trail leads him away from the city sprawl and deep into the country's rainforest interior, where he encounters both horror and wonder. Graham McRae Burnett, author of his bloody project, wrote, Infinite Ground does that magical thing that only the very best novels do. It makes you see the world afresh. Dazzling stuff. Neil Mukherjee, author of The Lives of Others, which I've also read, um, says, an electrifying piece of work, strange, terrifying, riveting, and written with scintillating intelligence, but most important of all. I knew I liked Martin McInnes, people. Stunning. I doubt you've read anything like it by none other than Jeff Vandermeer. So, um, looking forward to this one. Again, might try and squeeze this one in next year. Finally, I've got Blackwater by Michael McDowell. This is actually four books, I think. It's a series of books all in like this big copy. Um, and it's actually, funnily enough, got a new introduction by Nathan Ballingrud, who, as we know, I've talked about a little bit this year about discovering his work in sort of multiple arenas, multiple places. So this is horror. I don't read much horror. I haven't historically got on well with horror fiction, but there are lots of weird authors who I like or speculative authors who I like who definitely play with the tropes of horror. It's not like the horror itself I don't like. I think it's the writers themselves. This comes at the recommendation of the lovely Emily, um, who also recommended Little Big, which I'm desperate to get to before the year is out by John Crowley, Crowley. I just feel like I'm gonna love that book. I don't know why it's calling to me. It's pulling me towards it. I'm desperate to read it. So yeah, this one, I think it's like an intergenerational sort of story, um, but obviously horror vibes. So I love that combination. Seems kind of weird to me, which I like. Let's see if I can find anything else about it. It doesn't seem to, I don't seem to have, <laughs> a um, blurb of any kind on this. I know six volumes, so there's a lot in here actually. Um, yeah, I think it's supposed to be kind of a southern gothic vibe. Let's see if I can find a good blurb for it. So Blackwater traces more than 50 years in the lives of the powerful Caskey family of Perdido, Alabama under the influence of the mysterious and beautiful but not quite human Eleanor da Dammit. The flood heralds the arrival of a visitor who will change the Caskey family and the town forever. And then kind of go through all the different um, volumes and what happens in them. But very much looking forward to this. Um, it's a chunker. I feel like it would be good for this time of year, but I am definitely maxed out on the TBR ATM. Okay, I've been meaning to haul this pile of books for quite some time. Um, I had, I've had them in a special little pile all by themselves. I, if you remember, when I did my big birthday haul, I mentioned that I was still waiting on some secondhand books that I had bought. So this is, these are those books. Um, the first up is The Sparrow by Mar uh, Mary Doria Russell, which was talked about in our Discord. I can't quite remember who it was now, but this is a 1990s fantasy, I think. Let me see, that kind of has a little bit of a cult following, but it has obviously gone under the radar, radar 1996. I had never heard of it before this lovely person mentioned it. I cannot remember who it was. So The Sparrow, an astonishing literary debut, takes you on a journey to a distant planet and to the center of the human soul. It is the story of a charismatic Jesuit priest and linguist, Emilio Sandoz, who leads a 21st century scientific mission to a newly discovered extraterrestrial culture. So it's not fantasy, it's sci-fi. <laughs> um, Sandoz and his companions are prepared to endure isolation, hardship and death. Nothing can prepare them for the civilization they encounter or for the tragic misunderstanding that brings the mission to a catastrophic end. I won't go on more than that, but 
I'm definitely very intrigued by this one and looking forward to reading it. I have got Jean Wolfe's The Book of the New Sun. So you will know I talked about this recently um, on TikTok and on Instagram. So you may have missed it on here if you don't follow me on either of those platforms. I actually got a gorgeous Folio Society copy sent to me a few weeks after, not, well, yeah, my birthday was a long time ago now. A few months after I had bought these copies for my birthday for myself um, because I just, yeah, I feel like the book of the new sun is coming for me. So these are, if you don't know, these are like iconic speculative fiction books, sort of, again, cult classics within the genre, speculative fiction authors like Neil Gaiman, Ursula Le Guin. Um, countless others have said that Jean Wolfe was one of the best writers in the genre, one of the best writers ever. Um, they are much loved. They are definitely considered quite challenging and weird and like a mix of sci-fi and fantasy. I think this is somewhere between the two. I'm really, really looking forward to reading them. I'm going to read them next year. They are, there are actually four books in these two volumes. It's typically published like that. And I actually think the Folio Society copy is gorgeous. And I'll show it, to you, show it to you tomorrow in the daylight so you can see it properly. But I actually think these covers are pretty good. And I'll link these ones down below. The Book of the New Sun is unanimously acclaimed as Wolf's most remarkable work, hailed as a masterpiece of science fantasy, comparable in importance to the major works of Tolkien and Lewis. Um, the Shadow of the Torturer is the first volume in this four-volume epic, the tale of young Severian, an apprentice to the Guild of Torturers on the world called Earth, exiled for committing the ultimate sin of his profession, showing mercy toward his victim. The New York Times says it's a major work of 20th century American literature. Wolf creates a truly alien social order that the reader, reader comes to experience from within. Uh, Ursula Le Guin said, a masterpiece, the best science fiction I've read in years. These copies have introductions by Ada Palmer, who is an author I haven't read actually, but I would like to read, she's on my list. So that's the book of the new sun. And the last book I had was My Name is Asher Lev by Chaim Potok. First of all, I absolutely adore this cover. Can you see it, this kind of retro cover? I don't know, I just think there's something so beautiful about it with the, the coloring of it. I just really love it. So that's why I bought this particular sort of tiny little old paperback. So this novel is about a young boy whose extraordinary talent leads him away from his family and his Jewish faith into a painful maturity and a perilous success. And this one has been championed by the lovely Kenzie in our Discord. And um, she has written lovingly about it a few times and so, I had to pick it up. That is all anyway, my loves. So yeah, let me show you the where we're up to with the bookshelves and then I'll come back and do you like a proper run through of what I've done so far. Putting these books back in their place. Um, so these two bottom shelves are my unread shelves um, currently. Adding my new ones in. Little previews for you. Look at my Jeff Vandermeer collection together for the first time. My red Toni Morrison's together, just perfection. Now we're too dark. Okay, I'm just gonna do this in the daylight tomorrow, but I'm excited. So yes, thank you, my loves, for watching today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all again very soon.